Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. Today we have a battle of heavyweights. Both of these trucks were redesigned for this year, which means we have to pit them against each other. On my right is the Chevy Silverado 2500 High Country, and on my left is the Ford F-250 Limited. They're both fit with a diesel engine, and you know we're gonna put them to the test, so in this video, we'll tow with them, we'll go for a drive, and we will tell you which truck is better. Let's start by looking at the power plants, and in both cases, these are the most powerful versions of these trucks. So at Chevrolet, we have the 6.6 liter Duramax diesel V8. It's making 470 horsepower, 975 pound-feet of torque, and that is sent through a 10-speed automatic. Now over here at Ford, we have the high output version of the 6.7 liter turbo diesel V8. This thing is making 500 horsepower and 1200 pound feet of torque. And yes, this Ford is the most powerful heavy duty truck in the segment. Oh, and it also sends its power through a 10 speed automatic. So I am excited to see how this thing pulls our trailer. Let's take a closer look at the package we have from Chevrolet. So this is the 2500 High Country Midnight Edition. And as that name suggests, it's all blacked out. So you're getting the black bar up there in the grill, the blacked out Chevy badge, which is pretty nice. And then a beautiful set of 20 inch blacked out wheels as well. Again, the High Country is all blacked out. It's a sharp looking package. Our only complaint is that with this truck, you can only get the black edition or the midnight edition on a black truck. Why can't I get a red truck with everything blacked out. Chevy doesn't do that. If you want it to be black, it's gotta be all black. Moving inside quickly, we will look at what I consider to be the best sticker in the industry. It's right down here on the B pillar of this truck and it tells us the towing and payload ratings for this specific truck, VIN specific, so you know they're good numbers. And let's see what this truck can do. So max payload, 2,974 pounds which is a pretty decent number. And then max conventional towing, 18,500 pounds. So we'll see how that chalks up to the Ford, but no, no other brand offers a sticker like GM does down there. And I honestly love it. As we get back, we have this mid step here now to help you get up into your bed. We also have a hard tonneau on today, so I can't actually use it. And then at the back end of the truck, you get those handy dandy bumper steps down there to help you climb up. And then also Chevy's, Multi-flex tailgate, which uh, yeah is still very useful. Operates as a step, a load stopper, uh, has a number of different uses actually, and uh, comes in handy. I would actually say in the tailgate wars, in my opinion, this is probably the most useful of all the little tailgate tricks that have come out. Uh, but why don't we go look at the Ford now and see what it has. And over here we have the Ford F-250 Limited. Now the first thing you're gonna notice, a lot more chrome on this truck. And yes, this is a top trim Super Duty. So usually that's where you get all the chrome. Another thing you might've already noticed, that big plastic air dam down there. These are becoming more common on trucks these days, but the Chevy doesn't have a massive air dam and the Ford does. So sitting next to each other, that thing really does stand out. Why is it down there? Fuel economy. That's all about aerodynamics and helping the truck to suck up less fuel. So as we roll back, we get also a nice set of 20 inch wheels down there. Not quite as nice as the Chev, I would say, but still not bad looking. Um, we do have a set of powered running boards on both of these trucks, which is always appreciated. And again, if you're spending this much on a truck, you better have a power running board. Now I will consult the payload sticker here for the Ford F-250. And we're talking about 2,966 pounds of payload, which means this truck has eight pounds less than the other truck. That is pretty dang close. Now for the tow rating, I have to consult my cell phone and use Ford's handy dandy chart here, which is not confusing at all. Look at all those numbers. Of course I can figure it out. So high output, 331 rear end, crew cab, 
long box. We come down here and that gives us 20,900 pounds on the gooseneck, 19.9 on the fifth wheel, and this is conventional towing now. 22,000 pounds of conventional towing. So can I figure it out? Of course I can, but Chevy makes it so easy. And, and in that chart, Ford actually says, hey, by the way, there's your tow number, but the option content and the trim of your truck is gonna reduce from that number. So they are straight up telling you the number they're giving you is not correct. It's probably very close, but because we have a limited here with a couple options, you can actually assume those numbers, they'll be a little bit lower than what's on the sheet I just don't get why it has to be such a guessing game. Don't make this a tough thing for people. Make it simple like GM has done. I'm really hoping the Ford and Ram will follow suit. So as we roll back, another feature which is the exact same here on the Ford, we have that mid-step right there for getting up and accessing your bed. And yes, we do have the monster eight foot bed on this truck, 176 inch wheelbase versus about 158, I believe, over there on the Chev. So it's a big wheelbase difference. That will show itself when we start pulling a trailer. Um, we do have bumper steps now in this Ford too. That's new for this year. They kind of borrowed that from Chevrolet. And I do appreciate that. Power down tailgate. We have the in camera or the in tailgate camera. I'll show you how that works in a little bit. And then of course the classic Ford tailgate step. This one's been around for the longest. Still works quite well. Again, I think the Chevy's tailgate's a little more useful, but for getting up and unloading things, that is great. And you gotta love an eight foot bed. Man, is there a lot of space in the back of this truck. All right, now we've got this F-250 here up on the ramp so we can look underneath. The first thing I like to point out, nice big exposed tow hooks up there so you can easily pull this truck out or pull something else out if you need to. Now, next up, we have this big plastic air dam. So I took a look and I can tell you that there are 12 clips along the inside here that you would have to remove to actually take this air dam off. A couple of them just look like bolt heads and then a couple of them look like little plastic clips. So yeah, it's not the easiest process if you want to peel that thing off of there, if you want your truck to look better, I guess. Now moving back, we get to here. This is the one fundamental difference in our comparison today. The Ford still has a solid front axle. You'll see in a second, the Chevy has independent front suspension. Um, generally, that means that the vehicle with IFS handles a little bit better on road when it's empty. Truthfully, this Ford is so good now that the, the, the dynamics on road are just not that different from that Chev with IFS. Now this of course will help you a little bit off road and then some people will just argue that the longevity of a solid axle is a little bit better than the independent front suspension is. But that's like I said, the one fundamental difference here today is that big log up here. Now as we roll back, we get to the transfer case right here in the center. Then you get your main drive shaft to the back. The other thing I need to point out is this massive fuel tank right here. This is 182 liters of diesel. This is a ridiculously large fuel tank. And yeah, the range on this truck is north, well north of a thousand kilometers. So you don't have to hit up the fuel station that often. Now, the last thing I wanna show you I noticed is all the way back here in the rear suspension, underneath those rear leafs, it essentially looks like just a block lift. To my eyes, that looks like a two inch block. That's, uh, you know, the easiest way to lift a truck is by just adding a block in right there under the leafs. And that's what Ford has done here on this Super Duty, which was just interesting to me. I thought maybe that would just be long travel suspension, but no, they simply stick the block in there and that helps them get the ride height at least out of the rear. Now we got the Chevy up here. And first of all, just like the Ford, two really nice prominent tow hooks up there in the front. I like that. And then just this tiny little baby air dam here, nothing like Ford puts on the Super Duty. So that'll be interesting to see how much of a fuel economy difference it actually makes over there on the Ford. Now, as we get back, I already mentioned this, you can see it. This is independent front suspension. There's no axle here. Now we do have the Z71 off-road package on this truck too. So you'll also notice a couple of skid plates, but this is interesting guys. This first First skid plate is plastic. This is my magnet test, by the way, to check for aluminum versus steel. But yeah, the first plate is plastic. The next plate is steel. 
That one's a really interesting choice to me. Generally, the first plate, in my opinion, should be the strongest material. And then the belly plate, that one can afford to be plastic. But Chevy's gone the other way around with it on this truck, which is uh, an interesting choice, to say the least. So yes, like I said, independent front suspension here. We can roll back. You do get a little transfer case skid plate right there and that is also steel so i appreciate that of course on the ford there was no skid plates but these aren't off-road trucks so i'm not going to knock it for that now back here we get to the fuel tank and here on the chev 136 liters of diesel that is quite a bit but it's nowhere near the capacity of the ford so there's another area where yes the super duty can just straight up take more diesel than this truck can and then at the back you will see that set of rancho shocks those are unique to this truck because it has z71 and then no block lift here there is a bit of a bracket that's welded directly onto the axle that gives it a bit of a lift in the rear but it's not like the ford which just had those blocks right shoved right in there so yeah definitely a different philosophy when it comes to the suspension on these trucks as well all right it's trailer time so we're here in the chev throw it in reverse and i can show you guys the camera system so that's your first view when you first go into reverse, the top down and then the rear view right there. And we can cycle through them. That's a front view. There's my top down hitch view, my top down nose. That's down the sides of the truck. Those are your front drive wheels. Those are your rear wheels. There's your second hitch view. That's more specifically zoomed in on the hitch. And then you also have a chimsel camera to look down into your bed. And you can even zoom that one in, which is pretty neat. So let's go back to our regular rear view and we'll use that for now as we back in. And then of course, once you get close, zoom it in. Hopefully our height is okay. And bingo, let's go hook up. And now folks, here we are on the open road in the 2500. We have a 10,000 pound trailer on the back because of course these are heavy duty trucks so we like to evaluate them with weight on because that really shows you the characteristic of one of these trucks. And that's what these trucks are built for. Exactly. So um, that here in our Chev, we do have less towing and less power than over there in the Ford. So just outright numbers game the Ford takes it. So the question then becomes, you know, what does that really feel like in the real world? Does it, you know, feel massively different or not? So that's what we're going to try to answer once we get into the Ford. But let's start with the Chev. Uh, how does it feel with the 10,000 pounds, both power-wise and, you know, dynamically? 10,000 pounds is the sweet spot with these trucks in as much as um, it is so much under capacity that it, it truly feels like nothing. Yeah, fair enough. That feels that way from the passenger seat too. Exactly. And that'll, that's what's going to happen over there with the Ford. I mean, eventually one day we're going to have to get into like a 20,000 pound trailer. Then you probably feel the difference. Sure, for properly pushing them. But no, I think I think this is more than enough weight to evaluate, and we're going to do zero to sixty runs. So again, the numbers will actually come out and tell us, you know, how much quicker one truck is versus the other one. But if what you're saying is true that the towing is basically the same, well then why would you buy one over the other? The question then has to be asked, and then I think the answer is the interior and the features. You're going to gravitate towards one over the other because you like sitting inside better. So I guess talk to me about High Country. Uh, what do you think about the the Chevy interior? Well, I mean they're they're you know, we keep saying this. These are these are new interiors. And frankly, it's new in HD for 24. Right. It gravitated from the light duty trucks. And it's, it's great, particularly great when you consider um, three, four years ago what the interiors were like, which was really awful. Yeah. So it is on par now, in my opinion. Ram to me has always been the best, at least currently. Um, the Ford is decent, and this is now right up there. Yeah, no, I agree with you there too. In terms of the materials they use, really nicely picked out. Everything really kind of meshes well together in terms of the stitching, the wood, the chrome, the accents, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then when it comes to actual sort of the usable features, you do have a head-up display, which I love. You do have the rear camera mirror up here, which is nice. And I'm actually noticing right now with our trailer on, you can adjust this mirror so you can actually see the trailer. And when you have a flat deck, 
that can be an issue with the regular mirror you couldn't see that back there maybe just the end of it yeah Whereas you're right with you the wouldn't. camera you can actually see your tie downs in a bit of the trailer so this is one of those usage cases with the flat trailer where i actually like having that camera turned on well because it's, you're it's, able to it's see nice more. to be able to see your cargo actually fall off yeah exactly um and then we also have powered towing mirrors here so always a nice feature too you don't have to get out and drag them out by yourself um tow haul mode of course integrated trailer brake controller and you guys already saw the suite of cameras so you know a good amount of towing uh, features and accessories as well in this truck the other thing for me is that gm still relies very much on physical dials and buttons yep. uh, there's certainly information in that center screen um, and also you know in the driver's inf in information but yeah way more buttons and dials and I mean for me maybe it's an old thing I prefer that sure and still the column shift that's the real the most old school thing in this truck right is you're still pulling it down to go into drive yeah but you know the, the cool thing with a column shift I think a lot of a lot of companies have realized this is that it frees up the entire center here right. okay Tons you know you're not eating up all this valuable real estate you know with a, a, a pistol grip kind of a thing right yep and um, I'm probably not the only one but my wife gets in and plunks her purse right there and with the stupid pistol grip and some of these other ones she insists on putting it up here where I like to put my arm so then there's that tug of war going on sure no yeah exactly it takes up a lot of good usable real estate down here in your center all right, folks, here we go. We're going to do our 0 to 100 kilometer an hour test. We're in tow haul mode and four wheel drive auto. I'm using the trusty stopwatch. And three, two, try it again. Three, two, one, go. And 100. That was pretty good. That was a 14.6 0 to 100 with our 10,000 pound trailer, which feels pretty decent. Now let's go towing in the Ford. So throw it in reverse and we can show you the camera system here. So just like the Chev, you get a top down and you get that rear view. The sun's making it a little tricky right now for me to see it. There we go. And let's run through the other views here. So. You can get just the rear view. You can get the wide rear view. There's your chimsel cam looking down into your bed. There's your hitch cam. This is your auxiliary camera. You can put that where you want it. And that's the trailer reverse guidance system, which will actually help you back up to your trailer, but we do not have that set up. So we'll go back here. We will hit the camera button. Oh, sorry, the hitch button, I mean. It's actually a little too far out, so you use this view until you get nice and close, and then we can use our zoomed in hitch view. Nice. And there's one other feature I gotta mention, and that is the fact that right up here, see it says auto park brake ready? What that means is that once the truck has been you once you've used that zoomed in view on the hitch the truck realizes that you're hooking up a trailer so when you come to a stop put it in park the parking brake is on why is that important because anyone who ever has ever hooked up a trailer knows if you put it in park and then lift, lift your foot off the brake you might roll backwards half an inch but that half an inch could be enough to make the trailer not line up so i really like that feature and it's actually here on both the trucks the chev and the ford now let's go throw our 10 grand on and see how it feels So one other quick point I want to make here on the Ford are the safety chain hookups. Look how big these loops are. Really big, really easy to get to, multiple angles you can get to them. The Chevys weren't hard to use, but I just appreciate Ford making these nice and big and just simple to get to. And a lot of times you have different style of hook, well any kind of hook is going to fit on there. So yeah, nice safety chain hookups here on the Super Duty. And here we are in the F-250 Limited. And as it sits, Dad, not only is this the most powerful heavy-duty truck you can now buy, but this is basically the configuration you would get for towing with the long wheelbase and the eight-foot bed. 
So we'll get to power in a second, but again, dynamically, I'll tell you from the passenger seat, I can actually feel the trailer even less in this truck. Not to say the other truck was struggling at all, but I would actually say the wheelbase makes that bit of a difference and the Ford is, is even a little bit smoother. Would you say that too? The wheelbase certainly makes the difference. I mean, you know what, the longer the wheelbase, the better the towing is gonna be. So it just spreads the load. Yeah, and that's it and just smooths it out. And then, uh, yeah, talk to me about the power. You know, 1,200 pound-feet of torque, 500 horsepower. Um, is it noticeably more than the Chevy, just in kind of regular driving? No, because, uh, you know, it's hard to quantify, right? I mean, that's where we'll see it when we do 0 to 60. Sure. Between this and the Chev, not that we care how quick it goes, but that's the only way you can really sort of say, okay, look, that's where your extra torque is going, is it's getting you up to up to 60 that much quicker but like in normal just driving without like having a heavy foot no i don't really feel any difference yeah which again once is to say they both feel you know way oversuited for this job <laughs> yeah exactly and i think there is i think we're at a point now with these diesels that um they are past the point of necessity and yes. now it's literally becoming I don't know, bragging rights. Well, and it's a great thing you brought that up because actually GM, and they've said this out loud for a couple of years now, they're not playing the game, right? Ram went to 1,000 pound feet, Ford went to 1,050, I believe. Right. Ram went to 1,075, yep. and then Ford just went crazy right up to 1,200. Yep. Ford and Ram are, are very much playing the game. Yeah. They are the little kids in the sandbox. Chevy took a step back and I think said, 975 pound feet is more than enough and and what they've told me in the past is that and I don't know this for a fact with these new trucks but usually in first and second gear you're torque managing so all of the torque from the engine can't even be put into the transmission so it's sort of one of these things where again we're at these numbers where the power's not even all getting to the ground right away yeah so that's it's a good point it, it's very interesting yeah that like I said GM's not playing the game and, and and in the real world is where we feel the difference and in regular driving yeah I just don't think you're gonna feel that much of a difference with the power now before we go into features and interior Right now I have to spit out the prices because that's obviously a big point in this comparison. Here in this Ford F-250 Limited, you're talking about $124,000 Canadian. Over there in that Chevy High Country, $115,000. So yes, the Ford is $9,000 more expensive. And I also want to say that Ford in this, uh, in this trim level Limited, they give you very few options. The limited starts at 120 grand because you're already getting things like the high output diesel built right into it. The high country back in the Chev actually starts under $100,000, but the, the standard engine is still the gas engine. So on that truck, you still had to add the diesel and then there was another interior package plus the midnight edition. So the high country we have has a whole bunch of features, but even with them, we're still $9,000 less. So yes, the Ford has, has ratcheted up its numbers beyond everyone else in the industry. The, the Super Duty tows the most out of all the HDs, it provides the most power, but the price tag is the biggest. So once again, you gotta ask yourself, is it worth the money? And that's a question we're gonna get back to sort of in a little bit, but you have to have those prices in mind as we move forward with the rest of this Comparo, I think. Right? The, the, it's, it seems that they've just picked different packaging strategies. Yes, also true. Whereas Ford is now trying to, and they said this to us, remember when we were in Detroit? Sure, They're simplify. trying to simplify, simplify the ordering process. So, and, and by that, they mean that they are gonna put the package together and you just tick that one box rather than 10 boxes. Correct. Um, and having just ordered my own Chev, I can tell you that that build and price tool is, is, is a lesson in frustration and yeah, there is some simplification that's necessary. On the other hand, I'll also go along with the fact that I want to be able to make the choices. And for instance, the fact that you can get the gas in the Chev, whereas at this price point, you can't get the gas in the Ford. Precisely, yeah, you'd have to bump down at least one trim, maybe more. Yeah. So yeah, the fact that you got to change the trim. So yeah, Ford is, is uh, kind of leaving you with, with less choices. And with that in mind, we can move on to features and interior. 
And uh, you know what? The first thing I noticed, Dad, I'm not sure how much you did, are the seats. And I'll give this to the Ford right away. I think these seats are more comfortable. They have more adjustability. They're more plush. And these seats will massage you here in the F-250, which the Chevy won't do either. I so. am massaging my butt as we speak. <laughs> so when it comes to uh, front seat comfort, I'll, uh, I'll hand it to the Ford. And then when it comes to materials and layout, yeah, they're similar. They both look really nice, you know, futuristic, up to date. The big touch screen in the center, fully digital gauge cluster over there, head up display they both have. Um, Ford, unlike Chev with High Country, which does a bit of the Western theme thing, the Limited is more of the kind of, you know, black tie luxury, if you will. So we have this sort of fake carbon fiber look, this knurled metal down here in the center, bit of stitching up there on the dash. I also noticed a really nice soft headliner as well. No rat here. fur? No, very nice over here in the F-250. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure, straight up I would pick one over the other in terms of sort of luxuriousness. They're both quite nice. But when it comes to some other features actually, I'm a little disappointed in the F-250, for instance, Rear camera mirror, we do not have one here in the Ford. Nine grand more expensive, don't forget that. Four wheel drive auto, we don't have that here in the Ford either, but we have that over there in the Chev. So there's just two things where if I'm looking at the bill sheets and going this one costs you know this much more, I better get every feature in this truck I get in the other one and it's simply not the case. Now, on the flip side of that argument, Dad, the one feature I think the Ford has, which is head and shoulders above the Chevy, because you can't get it, Pro Power Onboard. This truck offers you two kilowatts of onboard power, and that, to me, is a big deal. That, so that is a big deal. That's nice to have here on the Ford. The Ford also has things like onboard scales and the smart hitch system. No one else in the industry has that, so the Ford has a couple things, but in my head, the four-wheel drive auto is kind of a big one, and so is that mirror. So, uh, yeah, features-wise, they're pretty similar, but there's a couple little differences that might kind of cause you to go to one brand over the other. All right, now let's see what 1,200 pound-feet of torque is like. Tow haul mode, empty road, here we go. Three, two, one, go! Oh, it laid some rubber. It laid a lot of rubber. hundred! Well, quick. that was quicker, folks. 13.8, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 0 to 62 miles per hour. So yes, the Ford is quicker than the Chev, and you can see how it stacks up against all the HD trucks right here on the leaderboard. Well, you saw all the numbers right there, and yes, this is now the fastest heavy duty we have tested. I mean, as it should be, right? It's also the most powerful one. So uh, yeah, between the Ford and the Chev, we have a two second difference, basically. And I'll actually mention to you quickly, we ran another run with the Ford off camera with four wheel drive on. And we actually got it about, you know, five tenths faster uh, because we were, you know, spinning the tires quite a bit on the first run. So in the 13s is this Ford. And that kind of, that sums it up for you. That is the difference between 975 pound-feet and 1,200. And I think Dad said this earlier. Again, this is not just to prove a point. If you are merging onto a busy road, that number actually matters. But more importantly, it just gives you a real sense for how much that power actually translates to in the real world. And then another really positive point for the Ford Dad is we did record fuel economy on our normal testing loop. So we did the identical loop with both trucks. And the Ford was 16 liters per 100 kilometers, the Chevy was 18. So it also did two liters per 100 better. So uh, better now let's also throw in here that we took those numbers from each truck's onboard computer. Sure, so we're trusting the computer. So we're trusting the computer and or we're also, we have no way of knowing how accurate they are. But those were the numbers as they came up on the dashboard. Yeah, and that was with the trailer on. So. It comes back to it in the numbers game the super duty is better right better fuel economy more power quicker to 60 felt better with the wheelbase there's only one number that hurts and that's the price and that's what it's going to boil down to so let's uh take this guy back up and uh try and come up with the verdict on whether or not it's worth it fair 
Well, folks, we have come to the end of this video. Now, this is actually the third new generation Super Duty that we have tested. And in every one of those videos, my verdict has been the same. For this model year, Ford is offering us more. And that is so true here as well. More power, more towing capacity, heck, even more fuel capacity in this truck. But there's also a big issue more price. For $9,000, I have to tell you, I would buy this Chevy if I'm going to save that nine grand because we are now in a world where these trucks can tow so much and they have so much power that yeah, even the less capable truck over here is ridiculously capable. And at this price point, if I'm spending that much, I want every possible luxury feature. And frankly, the Ford just didn't even have everything that the Chevy had. So yes, at the end of this one, the Ford might have done things here today a hair better, but I have to pick the Chevrolet just for how they outfitted it and how much money I'm going to save at the dealership. But now, of course, I need to hear from you. So please go into the comments right now and let me know which truck you would buy. Am I correct in leaning Chevy or would you go for the Super Duty? And as always, while you're down below, don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the join button to become a member of Truck King, and then come right back here to the channel to see what we're testing next. See ya.